Hi guys, so uh, today is October 23rd and uh, I would have been uh, 39 weeks and 2 days today but uh, as many of you guys know uh, I delivered 8 days ago uh, in, on uh, October 15th uh, so today I will make a labor and delivery uh, video on Sunday, October 13th uh, we went shopping with my mom uh, and Daniel and we were walking around uh, like a, a lot and uh, at the store I started to have this um, pulling like feeling uh, in my low abdomen and uh, it wasn't like contractions or anything like that it was just a uh, kind of pulling uh, sensation and uh, I never felt it before and um, I was jokingly said that uh, I, I will probably give a birth soon because it was a little bit difficult to walk uh, but uh, that night it, it was 2 a.m. on Monday already October 14th but it was 2 a.m. Uh, we were sleeping and I felt this um, as if uh, something leaking out of me just a little bit and I was thinking uh, to myself probably my water was breaking uh, but it was so little that I, I was like oh, probably not and then I, I fell asleep then I went to the bedroom and uh, and nothing like no gosh no anything like this happened uh, and uh, I went back to bed and uh, my water just broke like a lot and uh, my uh, bed was like so wet and uh, I wanted to see what color was it so and it was dark so I took my phone and I was trying to look there and to see what color and then Daniel uh, woke up and he was like oh, what happened I was like I think my water broke and I went to the bedroom again and uh, I saw like bloody show a little bit of blood and I think my mucus plug um, came out and I was like oh yeah my water broke but I didn't have any contractions or anything like this and I know that uh, some women are already in labor when their water water breaks some women um, like for some women doctors have to uh, break the water and uh, for some water breaks before labor uh, starts and in this case uh, I think when water breaks prior to labor you should have contractions in 24-48 hours something like this and if you don't have they induce you because of the risk um, of infection uh, so and I forgot to mention that uh, it was rainy day and as I found out later uh, on rainy days like this usually uh, hospitals packed and my hospital was packed because uh, as they explained to me uh, barometer uh, pressure because of barometer pressure uh, water breaks and women just go into labor I don't know so that that happened to me uh, we didn't call anyone we just uh, changed sheets and just went to bed because I knew that next day my contractions will start probably and I will go into labor no matter what and I just needed that sleep I just and I needed strength because I know that I will go natural so um, uh, so we tried to go to bed but I couldn't fall asleep of course for like a couple of hours and I finally fell asleep around 4 a.m. Uh, and I woke up around like 8 a.m. probably and that was I don't know it wasn't like deep sleep or anything like this I was just kind of napping uh, because just too many thoughts were in my head and 
uh, I wasn't scared, uh, but I was like, oh, finally, uh, I will deliver and Christian will be with us. Um, so the next day, like closer to the morning, uh, I think my early stage of labor began uh, because I I had these contractions, but it was like uh, menstrual cramps, no, nothing uh, more. Um, and they were not like so painful. I will. I, uh, I was still doing stuff around the house, and uh, we we of course uh, informed our doula that my water broke, and she advised uh, on what to do. And um, I was trying to uh, stay hydrated. I was uh, uh, drinking a lot of water and. I had a good breakfast because I knew that closer to uh, delivery, or closer to my active labor, I will not be able to eat much. Um, and I was trying to take naps, but I really couldn't. We we also informed our doctor, and they, uh, well, nurses told us to go to uh, to the hospital because when water breaks, they require you immediately to go to the hospital. But uh, because we know that if I wasn't dilated uh, as much, they would induce me with pitocin, and pitocin is like um, give you contractions on steroids, and it's like more painful and uh, I know that they are afraid of risk of getting infection to me and baby uh, but we didn't want to do that I wanted to labor at home as much as possible and to be dilated more pr before going uh, to hospital and our doctor said that he explained us uh, what, will, what will happen uh, and he said, but I would advise you to go to hospital, of course. And Dula said, I would advise you to stay at home. And we kind of didn't know what to do. So the, on Monday, um, as I said, I was still doing stuff in the afternoon. I even uploaded what's in my hospital uh, back video. Uh, but as I found out late later, like... Uh, it failed and uh, my my upload failed and uh, I apologize but I did upload it uh, that Monday um, so anyways at 7 p.m. we finally decided to go to hospital uh, because my contraction were getting stronger and uh, I thought that I was dilated about maybe three four centimeters and because it was kind of painful uh, not that I couldn't take it but it was more than just menstrual cramps um, so we went to the hospital they didn't even uh, usually they um, they send you to triage room and then they sort, it, sort uh, women out like who needs to go to labor and delivery room, who needs to go home, who... They just um, put me straight to the labor and delivery room. Uh, they uh, gave me a hospital gown, but I, as I said in my previous video, I had my own clothing. So I changed and um, we got ready and everything. They checked me, they checked my cervix and I was dilated only one and a half centimeters. And that was very disappointing because I really thought like, uh, I could even think that I was dilated more, maybe like five centimeters or something like this, uh, because of uh, the pain level that I had. Uh, but I really hoped and I was almost sure that I was three or four centimeters dilated but when they told me like I was one centimeter and a half I was like so disappointing um, and uh, so then uh, I was kind of laying there and we wanted to watch uh, like a funny movie Friends or something like this but then I started to have strong strong contractions and they were painful and uh, I would not lie to you guys uh, it is painful but I was like no 
I should push through this, I would go natural and as planned and all that stuff. So then Dula came around 9.30 p.m. Monday, still Monday, 9.30 p.m. Uh, and uh, she was doing uh, massage and, and Daniel was there uh, the whole time even though we were kind of thinking should he stay there for the birth uh, we, we knew that he wanted to cut umbilical cord but I didn't want him there f for, when I, for when I'm pushing and um, he also kind of didn't want to and then he wanted and then but he stayed uh, I didn't have strength to tell him uh, to leave I was just I don't know I didn't think about it he he was there um, so uh, birthing ball was uh, a good way to relax at some point I was just on my knees and I was just hugging this ball and it helped me uh, to go through uh, the it just it just was easier uh, for me uh, than laying in bed I don't know uh, the most painful for me the most painful contractions were when I uh, went when I was going to the bedroom uh, when I was just sitting and I think my pelvis was kind of opened and in the, at that moment the most painful contractions were yeah when I went to the bedroom um, another thing that helped me a lot, like the most helpful thing that helped, uh, that was helpful, uh, I guess was a hot shower and uh, uh, I was just standing there in the shower and I don't know, it just eased my pain a lot, I was just, I don't know, I couldn't see it, I was just standing there and, but I don't know it helped it like really helped me um, then I went back uh, in bed because uh, my I don't know just legs were weak and I was just tired uh, so I were in bed and uh, they checked me again I was six centimeters six centimeters dilated at that point and I was like, come on, six, six centimeters, I'm just halfway there and that's getting so painful. And uh, at that point, I heard that Dula came to... And, and uh, we prepared birth plan and everything and we notified uh, nurses that I don't want to be asked about medicine or anything like that so they were good about it. all the nurses were good and they were uh, I don't know I had a very good experience they were um, very soft and everything I didn't like that monitors I would tell you that when they um, uh, monitor babies heartbeat and contractions and they just I don't know those straps and everything just pull on you and uh, they were not on me like const like permanently they were on me for like maybe 20 minutes and 40 minutes off like 20 minutes on and uh, one hour off something like that but I didn't like them um, but other than that my hospital experience was good nurses were amazing everything was perfect uh, and so at that point when I was six centimeters dilated and a doula came uh, to Daniel and she was like I think uh, she might need an epidural because uh, she didn't sleep since 2 a.m. and it's almost 24 hours it was almost 2 a.m. Um, in the on Tuesday so she's she was like she didn't sleep for 24 hours she um, can't rest right now because contractions just back to back and she can't fall asleep she can't rest she needs that rest for uh, time when she needs to push and uh, that uh, she will need a lot of strength and uh, if she doesn't sleep and she's only halfway um, there are just there are 
hours to go and each construction just very painful and uh, she just needs to have an epidural and so that she is able to kind of rest and relax and um, I heard this and not for one second I was seriously thinking about getting epidural um, I was thinking I had a lot of thoughts I had uh, thoughts like uh, with second baby or with third baby probably I should get an epidural right away but then I was like with second and third babies usually uh, birth uh, faster so then it means it will be easier and I would definitely be able to do that uh, I had thoughts like uh, I don't know many thoughts but I never seriously thinking thought about getting an epidural because and Daniel asked me later why I refused um, and for me I was halfway through and uh, that halfway I was dealing with pain already and it didn't make sense to me go another halfway without pain and getting, ep getting an epidural when from the day one I didn't want an epidural and I thought I am halfway through and um, I don't know how many hours left but I need to dilate four centimeters more and then I just need to push and I need to find strength myself and uh, I just wanted to do it uh, because I thought if, get, if to get an epidural you should do it either right away and be without pain the whole um, process or if you didn't get an epidural then why to get it so it didn't make sense to me that's why I refused and uh, when he came to me after Dula spoke to him and he said um, you probably need to get an epidural because you need to get a rest and I was like in the middle of contraction I was like no and um, I don't know I was just I was able then to kind of control my body and prepare my body because I knew that I will need strength um, and between contractions when one two minutes when I had like one two minutes I was closing my eyes and I was resting and I would allowed my body to rest and then when contractions start I, I dealt with them and then again I was able to rest just a little bit to kind of uh, prepare my body till the end so uh, I was able to do it without it, an epidural and I'm uh, I'm really glad that I did and uh, I felt amazing after uh, one week passed I, I feel good the whole time after labor uh, I mean I didn't have like any problems afterwards um, and baby is perfect uh, and I'm not saying that it's because I didn't get an epidural I'm just saying that uh, I don't know what side effects I would have with epidural but I went natural and uh, everything was uh, good uh, so uh, Daniel was trying to help me during uh, labor a lot and he was massaging me and he was touching my uh, hair but I was I was just crazy I didn't curse or anything I didn't uh, but uh, certain things when he did I didn't like like he was kind of brushing my um, uh, hair like this with his fingers and I was like no not like this do like this and I was just it was just crazy uh, it's, it's funny now though but uh, so then pushing time and pushing actually was kind of the least painful out of everything even though I don't, I don't know I always thought that uh, that's the most painful but uh, it's not and it's not for uh, everyone I think because for everyone I talked to that was the least painful like early labor and the pushing um, was the least painful and the most painful is when you are in active labor uh, so uh, pushing time that was easy 
uh, I didn't look uh, in the mirror though they suggested but I was like I never saw uh, delivery in my life ever and I didn't I, I, just, I don't know I don't like such movies I don't like such videos uh, I don't know I just didn't want to see that and when they suggested me I was like no I don't want and they're like are you sure I'm like yeah uh, I'm like scared and doctor was like well if you act like this when you're scared then like that's pretty good and I'm like I don't know I just and they're like if you if you extend your arm you can feel his head I was like no I don't want to extend my arm uh, but uh, when I saw him I don't know first of all all the pain went away of course and uh, the minute the second I saw him and I looked back uh, like at my labor how everything went it wasn't that bad uh, he came out uh, six at 9.43 a.m. in the morning and uh, I mean not in the morning on Tuesday and he was 19 inches long and he I was 38 weeks and one day and that uh, on the Tuesday so he came uh, two weeks earlier and uh, I knew that I even said in one of my previous video that I have a feeling that he uh, will be earlier I don't know why usually my intuition is not so good but I kind of like felt that uh, and even that Sunday when I had this pulling feeling I thought he will be born soon but I thought that I had about a week I even posted a photo uh, and uh, I said that I he is showing like early signs of labor but I think I have about a week but uh, he came in like two days after that uh, so and uh, after that they put me they they put him uh, on me skin to skin uh, naked uh, body to naked body and uh, I'm telling you guys skin to skin is amazing thing like it's uh, they put him for about one hour and a half to two hours and then they weigh him and all do all the shots and all that stuff uh, but if you're able to uh, uh, put in your birth plan or ask doctors to do that for you that's amazing thing. Uh, I would strongly advise that. I would strongly advise to put him skin to skin even uh, after um, when you're already in postpartum room, when you're at home. Uh, put skin to skin uh, him on your husband. That's bonding time. That's, uh, that's just good stuff. You can search it uh, on Google. And you can read about it it's regulate temperature it uh, helps with breathing it I don't know just in my country all hospitals do that uh, here in Texas only a couple of hospitals do that and uh, other hospitals don't and uh, that's just a good thing uh, I can't like stress it enough uh, and then uh, they let umbilical cord to pulsate for about two minutes before cut it because that's also beneficial uh, if you can do those things uh, that would be just great that's just my advice um, and uh, what else uh, can I think that's it uh, I don't know what else to tell uh, if you guys have any questions uh, you can leave uh, them down below and I will sure uh, reply them and da, 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 da. I will uh, do a video on what I actually used uh, in the hospital uh, from my hospital bag and what I didn't use uh, and that will be soon that will be up soon so stay tuned for that probably next week or so I thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video